All right, everybody, we're back working on our Unity game, and we're doing uh, character control, and we've added a jump to our script. What we want to do now is we want to make it so we can only jump if we are grounded. Grounded will have to be equal to true in order to jump. So we're going to have to do a couple of things here to uh, enhance our code. And the first thing we're going to do is we're only going to jump if we are grounded. So all of this code goes inside of yet another if. So I'm going to go at the beginning here. We're going to do an F, another one, and it's just if grounded. If you have a Boolean variable, you can just check by saying, you know, for example, if grounded. So we're saying if grounded is equal to true is what we're really saying. So if it's equal to true, we're going to be able to jump. So we go ahead and go back to the game. Let's type F8. And by the way, the warning should go away because now we're using that variable called grounded. So we're only going to jump if we're grounded. Now, we've already set it to false, so we shouldn't be able to jump at all. So you're just going to hear me typing my keyboard, and nothing's going to happen if I did this right. So we go ahead and test it. Okay, I'm running my game. I'm hitting, I'm hitting space. Nothing's happening. Okay. Now, if you want to just test it out, you can set grounded to true and see if you can jump. Let's see if it works without me building my script. I might have to save it. We'll see. Yeah, I had to save the script. Control S to save. Go back. Press play again. And then we'll test it out one more time. If it lets me. Pause. And it's still... Okay, so it works if it's grounded. Okay, but we want this to change based on whether he happens to be uh, grounded or not. So what we're going to do is... By the way, in order to do this, I just want to point out that in our dude over here, we added our second box collider. We made it what's called a trigger. So this will keep track of whether it's colliding with something or it's not colliding. So we consider this like a trigger. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take advantage of the trigger. We're gonna write us uh, two more methods. By the way, this void update is what we call a method. So it's something that the player can do in the controller. So on here, what we wanna test is we wanna check to see if we're grounded or not. Okay, so it's um, it's a method on trigger enter to D capitalize and we're going to set grounded equals true. So when we enter, in other words, when we are colliding, that becomes a trigger enter. It's the moment we first collide. If we weren't colliding before, now we're colliding, we change grounded to true. Okay. Um, and by the way, my update, I have the curly bracket over there, so I'm going to do the same thing for this. And then now we have an on trigger enter, so you can probably guess there's an on trigger exit 2D. And now, grounded equals false. And we're no longer grounded, which means we cannot jump again. So we save our changes. Type F8 if you want to double check to make sure there's no error. It says build successful. We go back to our game now that we've saved our changes, and let's test it out again. One jump works. As he's in the air, I try to jump. I can never go any higher than that because I can only jump when I'm grounded. Okay, so that works now. Let's go ahead, while we're here, let's go ahead and add left and right control because it's not too much more difficult. Pretty much everything we have in place is ready to go, but we're going to add a couple things here um, that may or may not make sense, but it will work. The first thing we want to do is we're going to go ahead in update. We're going to send move velocity. We're just going to set it to zero because we haven't set it yet. Move velocity equals zero. Now we haven't used move velocity for anything. Okay. 
So when we write variables like speed, jump, move velocity, grounded, these things are not built in. So it's not like setting move velocity right here does anything yet. It's only going to do something when we actually apply it to a command such as get component velocity equals. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So sometimes you, you might see something like that. You might freak out. Oh, no, what's going to happen? But until we use it, it's hard to say. You have to kind of think about it that way. So we're going to do a couple checks. So we're doing horizontal movement. We want left and right. So we're going to check uh, certain uh, inputs again. And this time it's get key. It is not get key down. So we could actually be holding the key down. And as long as we're holding the key down, this whatever we do will work. And so this is key code. Now, if you want to do A for left, you are welcome to do it. Or if you want to do the left arrow, I'll go ahead and show you that. I have no idea. Oh, left Apple. I, I get it. It's the Apple key. <laughs> Took me a while. I don't have a Mac, so. All right, so anyway, there we go. Uh, if input get key, in other words, if the A is being held down or the left arrow is being held down, we need another parenthesis closing it at the end. Don't forget. Because this parenthesis has to do with the if. These have to do with the key codes. So keep that in mind. Make sure you have the same number of opening parentheses as closing, or this gets wonky. Well, it'll be broken. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to change move velocity. Move velocity equals negative speed. All right, we set this. Remember, we declare the variable speed here. We set it in unity. And so what we're going to say is the move velocity um, starts at zero, but if we're holding down a key, move velocity now becomes the negative value of speed because we're going left. Okay, so I'll put a little comment on there. Now, of course, the easy way to code this, if you're smart and wily, or maybe just you're lazy and smart, you can just copy and paste. And then what we can do is we can change the key code. So in this case, it's D. Or in this case, it would be right arrow. And then instead of move velocity equals negative speed, move velocity equals speed. So if we're going left, all right, we're going to be going at negative 4. If we're going right, we're going to be going at positive 4. Now, we have not applied move velocity to anything yet. So nothing will change. If we leave it like this, nothing will happen, even if we're pressing keys. Okay. It's only going to happen after we check these when we apply a velocity to the rigid body. So it's another get component. Get component. Rigid body 2D. By the way, if it's just rigid body, it means it's 3D. And the only difference between a rigid body 2D and 3D is things like velocity in a 3D one actually is going to have uh, X, Y, and Z, whereas 2D, it's just X and Y. Hopefully you understand why that would be. I'm going to set the velocity equal to, and we're going to do just like we did with our jump, where we don't change the Y, we only change the X. New vector 2, move velocity, comma, and on the next line, we'll do the get component did I do the, hold on a second, did I do the, yeah, new vector 2, okay, great. Get component rigid body 2D. And I think I want to backspace this a little bit here, just so there's more room. Velocity dot Y. Hopefully that makes sense why we're doing it this way. And I'm going to back this up a little bit so you can see it. Okay. 
So we're going to get the component velocity. We're going to make it equal to new vector two, and we're going to give it a value of move velocity. In fact, um, I might move this down to the next line for sake for the sake of doing it. But just know that this move velocity is our x or horizontal movement. We started by setting it to zero, but then we might be applying negative speed or positive speed. So what's going to happen is if we don't press either key, we don't change the x. It's not that, you know, it's basically, it's going to be zero, actually. So it actually won't be moving. Okay. So at that point, uh, we've applied our, we've applied basically our horizontal vector to it. So let's test this out and see if it's working. And I did not mean to do that. Go ahead and build it just to make sure there's no errors. I want to take a look. You can pause the video here if you're having trouble getting caught up on typing. I'm going to go ahead and test it, though, make sure it is working correctly. If it's working correctly, I should be able to go left and right. And I should be able to knock this little dude off. And sure enough, I did. And now he's not jumping, though, so we do have a problem with that. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, we have a little bit of a problem. If, if he falls over to the side, he can't jump, which actually kind of makes sense. And there he fell. I have too much fun on these games sometimes. Now, one of the problems with this, this sprite, my dude here, is uh, sprite renderer. Uh, where is it? Oh, if I do fixed angle, now watch what happens. Fixed angle, I don't think I'll fall over anymore. In which case, that jumping collider will always work. So I can even jump on top of him. I can... Yeah, I fell. So if you were to take your character on Sprite Render and... Sorry, not Sprite. Rigid Body 2D, excuse me. Rigid Body 2D. If you check Fixed Angle, he will not fall to the left or the right. He will stay in this position. And you might be thinking that's a bad thing, but if you're going to apply... Uh, animated sprites and things that might be a good thing so it's just something to think about is uh, you may or may want not want to check that out if it can fall over take it off if it's just a single sprite you might want to do it that way you make it fixed angle and it just will help I hope this helps I'm gonna just leave you with the code here um, and I'm just gonna zoom out enough just so you can see actually it's probably not enough room for you to see all that code uh, we'll just focus here on what we did, which is the adding the move velocity as well as the trigger. These were the things we added in this video.